Here's our nice little garden area, guys. Uh, this is going to be a really productive area for my vegetables this year. And we've already got a lot of things actually going on in here. It's pretty nuts. But I didn't show you the other bed on the other side, but we direct seeded a whole bunch of crops in here. All the cool loving stuff. This stuff can really go in. You can direct seed this as early as like March 15th, which is what we did. And you can see all these peas are now coming up. We have like rows of carrots and beets and turnips and lettuces like spinach and arugula different salad mixes and all this stuff is really going nuts and likes this time of the year so if you're not planting anything this time of the year you're kind of missing out and we also have lots of alliums I've mentioned them but they're everywhere they really are everywhere we went a little nuts I like to obviously cook with them you can see there's just they're just everywhere look at these I want to show you an incredible looking garlic plant by the way look at this look at these plants I can't believe how strong this plant already is and it's only March 11th they look like they're ready to be harvested <laughs> in terms of thickness here on the stalk honestly I can't believe it and you can see the difference between some that have been planted out very late and some that we planted out very early um, there's definitely a varying difference though across the board we put in all kinds of peas down in here and they're coming up you can see them and these peas are everywhere in this bed but most of this is going to be exclusively for our heat loving crops and a lot of this stuff I'm going to let this this stuff grow till about mid-May early July or early June I'm sorry and then we're gonna transplant all the heat loving crops in here and that will take over this space and the peas will have to go but we also have this weed here I don't know what this weed is but it is actually pretty it's pretty I think and it flowers the first thing to flower in my yard even before the maple tree, so I, I'm keeping it, I think, for this purpose. <laughs> and we also have underneath it, we planted some sugar cane down in here. We did put them in the trench, thank you, Brian, and everyone else who corrected me on that. But that stuff will be able to per uh, be perennialized here. Go back and watch that video if you're interested. Um, we did a whole video on the sugar cane, really how to get it through the winter. We also have our Salabotsky pomegranate here in the corner, which if it's not leafing out or like now, I'm a bit surprised. So let's take a nice little look. It doesn't look like it's leafing out. Very surprising actually, but my persimmon or my um, pomegranates actually usually wake up before the figs in the greenhouse so and I would say the persimmons wake up maybe even later but the persimmons have already woken up so very very strange I don't know what to make of it but we'll see we're also in this little area planting out about 22 varieties of figs I'm not kidding we talked about this at great length and we're going to talk more about it actually but you can see as a nice little demonstration this is the tree of how i'm going to be planting all of them this year on how i think the best method is for planting them doing a lot of work at the planting time is really going to make a big difference with these figs you can see we have them in a nice little mound and we've created a nice mound with these with the dirt but also the rocks and the brick and this stuff's really heating up the soil the difference in temperature at the soil level between here and where there's just bare ground is about five to ten degrees depending on the day and then also the difference between the rocks and where it's mulched with like straw or rice holes or wood chips 
the soil temperature there, the difference is about 15 to 20 degrees. It's actually insane. So because we have all this heat coming from raising up the soil, but also the rocks, our figs are gonna go nuts this year. And it seems like a lot of them definitely die back at least to a lower point on their trunks. And this little section here, but this was their first year in the ground. I'm not, I was not really expecting too much, but I am gonna be expecting big things this year. And if they don't come, then I'm gonna be a bit disappointed. I would say at the very least, these trees are gonna to have to perform super well during the year to make up for the fact that they didn't survive the winter. So if any tree does that, I mean, we're going to put in so many varieties. We're going to have about 50 varieties total. But if they don't survive the winter, at least they can come back from the base. Put out a lot of growth and put out a lot of fruit for me an earlier time of the year. So that it's not really the biggest deal if they don't survive. You know, it's not going to be the end of the world. So that's the plan with that. And, you know, it would be nice if one of them did survive. It seems like Hardy Chicago is the only one that really survives every year. But you never know. We can't give up. We got to keep trying. Keep trying different things. This little area is really going to be this straw portion where this is more bare ground. This is more of the straw area. We put a lot of flowering plants in here to really make things look beautiful. That's really been the whole effort of this last year in a way is to try to come up with ways to make things look beautiful because we had a lot of fruit trees that we got in the ground, a lot of things that did their thing, but you know, we really wanted to make sure that we were making this area really beautiful. And you can see all the rocks and the bricks I have here in preparation for about 21 more fig trees that we're gonna put in here. Um, we're also planting a variety of citrus back in here. And I guess we can talk about that at a later point, but there is gonna be a citrus tree right here, which is an improved form of flying dragon. It's a seedling that the fruit actually is more edible and it's hardier than flying dragon. Uh, here we have the cherries and we're onto the patio now, finally. The cherries now are blooming. You can see the white in their buds. The white is finally showing on those white flowers. It's tough to see, but it seems like every flower cluster is putting out more more flowers than I had predicted. So that's not working at all. <laughs> I don't know. There must be some kind of button because this is a super fancy camera, guys. There must be a button on here to make this thing autofocus. At least I thought I was hitting the button, but it doesn't work. Um, we do have jujubes in here on the patio, and we were overwintering these guys all winter. We leave them outside in their pot all winter. People always are like, what can I leave outside? Well, it's like, you can leave these out. And we do a whole, we did a whole experiment for two years to see what we could overwinter here, and we had them all lined up. You guys remember that. We did a video on that for two years in a row. Cover them all with straw. Cover the, the pots here with straw. Just like the mulch on top of the soil, even in the garden beds, compared to the rocks, the rocks are warming it and the mulch is cooling it down. So by keeping all that mulch on there and all that straw, I was able to keep this chi tree dormant for quite some time, but now I've taken the straw off and it's leafing out. And you can see here, it's putting out lots of growth just about everywhere. And then this is probably the last year I'm gonna give it. If it doesn't fruit this year, we're getting rid of it. The whole idea with the chi, look it up guys, it's a weird fruit. We talked actually pretty good at, at length about it. and. Um, if it doesn't fruit this year, because it may need a male, it is a female chi. It, the male, if you have a male, it causes them to have lots of seeds in the fruit, and it's not really something you want to eat. So, for me, it's either, you know, female or nothing. And if I can't get the female to fruit, I might just give up. 
I may stick it in the ground somewhere and just say screw it you're on your own maybe it'll fruit in the ground we're gonna try to feed this thing a bit more maybe and also um, water it I think water is gonna be the key because the jujubes need a bit more water but the figs in the patio do not and when we hook up the irrigation here and you can see it's all lying on the ground this irrigation is set up mainly for the figs so we're gonna set up different irrigation for the jujubes and the chi to give them a bit more water. The jujubes though in no way are awake so it's pretty cool to see that these guys are indeed staying dormant for as long as possible and these guys are going to really leaf out the very last thing in the yard so we've also got you can see all these figs that are in fact leafing out and we're going to have to move these inside because if there is a frost then we're going to have to essentially come in here and um, move them inside if you know if that frost does come in because we don't want these guys you know braba leaves we don't want these guys to get hit with uh, any frost that will certainly kill back those bugs um, you can see over in this portion of the yard, we have the butterfly bush, which is coming back nicely. We gave it a nice haircut because this thing gets out of control. Um, and then also there's figs down in here and all down in this row will be more figs. In this row, more figs. And in this row, more figs. But let me take you guys over this way first. We can, we can go back there in just a minute, but Look at all these flowering plums and apricots. Beautiful trees, we just put them in. Not really expecting too much out of them this year, or maybe really even any year, <laughs> because the way that the sun is orient oriented uh, this time of the year, it just, it's not very beneficial because the ground in this location warms up very quickly, even with all the straw. We have like three inches of straw and it just doesn't seem to matter. So the soil warms up too quickly and these guys think it's spring and then there's a late frost that comes in and wipes them out. Here's a peach, this pink flowering one. And then we've got over here really a crazy amount of flowers in the plum. This guy, I have a feeling is actually the rootstock that has taken over. <laughs> because I don't see a graft point and I don't I'm surprised it hasn't flowered at this point so I think that one is actually the rootstock and oh wait no there is a flower up there check that out hopefully that flower can live and I can see if it is legitimately what it's supposed to be it's supposed to be I think a satsuma plum Japanese plum here's all the pears man Look at all these flowers. It's crazy. Look at this. It's insane. What we need to worry about, I think, we may have to worry about it, but I don't really have fire blight in this area. But I'm going to keep an eye out because once the, the uh, pears flower, that fire blight, if there is it in the area, can get inside the bloom and that's how they get in the tree. And that's how the tree gets fire blight and it's just, it's just not good. So, yeah, you just gotta be careful with that. We actually planted some potatoes down in this little area, caged it in, protecting it from the groundhog. And then there's also strawberries. The June bears are coming back. There's more here than I had thought, because we dug up a lot of them. And I didn't want to dig up as many as I did, but we did. And, um, you know, they're gonna spread themselves around for sure, but. It is a bit of a shame because my crop this year is going to be a bit light. Last year I, I was swimming in them strawberries, man. We've got the raspberries coming in. We still have yet to get them, some of them in the mail. We ordered a couple of them. We're getting a, a yellow raspberry here and then two purple ones back in here. And these are Caroline, which is a red. And that's double gold, which is a pink raspberry. They all have a different flavor depending on the color really great to see 
And then actually we're gonna put more figs in this row here and then in this row over there. And down in the center is going to be Marionberry. And right now we have Primark Freedom. You can see that guy down here who's also putting out leaves and new canes from the base. But um, yeah, I'm not too excited about them just based off how they performed last year with the, the Primacane crop. The, if you have a Floricane Blackberry, they perform super well. But I didn't really want to have a Floricane variety because of the spotted wing drosophilia that seems to coincide with that crop and it really wiped me out two years ago it really turned me off of blackberries in general but we're going to put a marion berry in here which is a more complex it is the most complex blackberry we also put in persimmons down here we have about nine of them on the property you can see this guy these are not leafing out just yet even though they're on the west side where there's lots of sun but we did mulch this in i guess that's helping and then this whole area i think we're going to just block this whole thing out all this grass and i'll put down a lot of cardboard and get this whole thing um really kill all that grass eh, maybe i won't who knows but so far all these sticks and stuff are there for that purpose to break down the soil let's check out the greenhouse I'm sure you guys have seen this. I've done a couple videos now on the greenhouse. We're getting a bit dark outside, but there is growth everywhere. I mean, it is nuts in here. And I can't even really get even back in there to show you because all this stuff right here is just in the way. But we've already pinched the tree. We pinched uh, Sweet Joy and Sandrosa. And the both of them are going to fruit for me about 90 days from today. So we have a ton of Brava, and I can't really figure it out. Here's Strawberry Verte. Right over here is Coldenam Blanca Negra. There's two of them on that tree. Um, we have Brava on, I think, what is Sanguinato right in here. I would say about 40% of my varieties. Here is a LSU Scott's Black. I think that one does produce a Braba. But hopefully a lot of them hold. And I'll have a lot of figs actually in July because of that, early July. Let me take you guys to the front of the yard. Front of the house, I should say. I wanna show you guys this little plot. We started this little plot here. By the way, um, I don't know if you've noticed the ground. I haven't really looked towards the ground, but there is tons of um, wild chives everywhere. And it's nice to observe the ground before you know we mow the lawn. You can kind of see them all everywhere. These little high patches of, of grass is all chives. There's also tons of weeds that are really beautiful. Like, look at this flower right here. That's gorgeous. And this is a really classic one here that I'm seeing everywhere. Puts out these white flowers. Observe the weeds, guys. And then here in this bed, we just put in some onions. We got them from the store. I realized I have more room. I should have started more onions. And that's what we went with. These are also the Walla Walla variety. We put them in... Um, clumps multi sow them just like Charles Dowding does we had some naysayers didn't believe it was done but I'm not the one who invented this stuff you know this is a market gardener with years and years of experience growing vegetables I may have planted these a bit too close but we'll see it should be about six to eight inches apart or something like that actually more around, along the lines of eight inches to even 10 inches but here's some broccoli we picked up transplanted that out it's been completely mauled and hopefully it pulls through and then in here was the raspberries and blackberries and you can see that a lot of these shoots are coming up and i'm gonna have to come in here and maybe even dig through this a bit and pull a lot of this out because it's just coming right back 
a lot of the figs are even waking up. Figs that we had transplanted that were dormant. The soil is just so warm here that this is just what is happening is that they're all waking up. Even this guy here, LSU Champagne, you can't really see it, but if you look very closely, you can see them leafing out. It's all about that rocks, man. Those rocks and the mounds. It's just warming up the soil so much. It's really helpful. And here's really something interesting that's taken off this year. These are my currants, and these are red currants. You can really see all these little clusters. They're very small. But I would say on just this branch here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Maybe about about twelve of them. And those little clusters turn into about twelve or ten fruits or so. So it's a lot of fruit in a small little compact bush. These guys actually get to be pretty big too. Um, probably six feet by six feet. What is real interesting is that we had planted our Illinois Everbearing cuttings. We sold these to people, telling them I gave them really large cuttings because we pruned this tree way back. It was 20 feet tall this time or in the uh, in the summer, and then when it went dormant, it was that big. So I took a lot of cuttings and I sold them to people, telling them that you should root them. And everyone's like, "Can you root them? How easy is it to root them?" Well, what I did was I just stuck some in the soil when I pruned them. And this was in the fall. I took these cuttings in the fall, stuck them in the ground like a fig. I scored the bottom and they're, they're leafing out. I bet you there's some sort of root under here. And I put even larger cuttings in the ground and I said, you know what, enough is enough. I don't need that many plants. But uh, that's what we got. It's just an incredible amount of plants down in here. How, how easy that was. It's crazy. And we're going to graft onto this rootstock. Look how big this thing is, man. It's crazy. I feel bad, honestly, because I put a lot of effort into this tree, but it's going to be way better in the future. And um, Girardi is really only going to keep itself to about six feet by six feet. These currents may even pass it in height <laughs> at a certain point. So we are going to graft it a bit higher and hopefully that'll help. But the sap flow is actually flowing just a bit. But we're going to have to come in here until this tree really is awake and then do the grafting. I'm going to have to make new cuts probably just about a couple millimeters down. And that's where we'll put the, uh, the grafts into and they'll be bark grafts. Now here we have, I think, our red currants as well. I have a, uh, a tag somewhere in here, but you can see there's just fruit all over these branches. It's everywhere. Um, and we also have on the other side, which are black currants, and they already look black. <laughs> they already have these weird black pieces on them here. You can't really see that, but see how that's purple, I guess? So, I guess that's one way you know that it's black to start off. And believe it or not, my persimmon tree here, my Rosianca persimmon, which has performed incredibly well, it hasn't performed very well. It's grown incredibly well. I love the shape. It's got a great size to it. This thing, I'm expecting about 200 fruits on it. Anything less, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> but it is also leafing out, which is not good. Because if a frost comes in, kills these buds here, or at least kills some of the buds, it's probably not going to be good for this year's crop. So what I did do recently was take off a lot of that mulch because I want to make this area less fertile because persimmons fruit better in a less fertile area, but by removing that mulch, I think I warmed up the soil and now it's leafing out, so not ideal. You know, it is what it is though. We'll see what happens. And then here, look at these beautiful peaches. Look at that tree, isn't that gorgeous? They're all so different. 
Look at that flower compared to that one. Crazy. Look at that one. These are all, are all different varieties of peaches. And oh, look at this. There's even different flowers on the same branch. That's wild. So, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited for a lot of peaches this year. Again, these frosts are worrying me. And, um, you know, it is going to be what it is, but not too happy about it. We also planted underneath this Japanese maple here. We planted in all kinds of other flower bulbs. And look how beautiful these guys are. Holy moly. Gorgeous. And then there's that weed that I was telling you about back in here. It's everywhere. I'm kind of liking some of these weeds, guys. I don't know why we get rid of some of them. Let me take you guys over to where the figs are. We're going to finish this up pretty quick. Here's more garlic. This is music. And you can see back in here, this stuff was planted a bit later in the fall, and it's actually done pretty well. But the garlic I have that's a bit more progressed was planted much earlier. Our Malta Black actually has died sort of back to the base. Very disappointed. And I can't really figure it out. But what I do know is that because the soil here with the wood chips is so cold, that what I need to do is really get rid of a lot of these wood chips this weekend. I'm going to move them aside, heat up the soil super fast. And what I think is going to happen is that because the soil is warmer and because it's it's in a more well-draining area, this tree is going to perform much better this winter time. And I'm going to I'm going to prove it. Obviously, I can't right now, but that's the goal. We also have some other crocuses and different things in here that have yet to really do much. The crocuses, man, are beautiful. It is the image of the the thumbnail of this video. The same thing with Improved Celeste, not really doing all that hot. <laughs> and uh, I'm not actually going to keep this one. I said I was going to get rid of it, but I am going to keep it. We have uh, cherries in here. These are bush cherries, and you can see they're flowering as well. These trees are going to be covered in flowers, absolutely covered in flowers. Here's another one. Romeo, Juliet, Carmine, Jewel. Here we have a nice little lingonberry that, unfortunately, if Big Bill's watching, this one may be dead. I'll have to get another one from him this year because I do want to try this fruit. He loves it. Wait, no. Looks like there's a new shoot coming from the base, so that's good. Perfect. We did have to move it around, which really sucks, but it is what it is. Look at this weed, by the way. I don't know what this weed is, but it looks actually quite beautiful. <laughs> it's really forming a nice ground cover. You can see it all in here. I don't mind it one little bit. I'm going to be honest. And then here is more flowers. Oh man, these things look gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful. Made this whole area look nice. So, the front of the yard is looking great. I'm excited for it. And I want to show you guys one more bed, but it's getting a little dark, so I think I'm going to call it. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching this one. If you got this far, this is a super long tour, probably close to an hour. So maybe I'll even break it up, different videos, but uh, that is the video. That is the tour. Everything is going nuts and really crossing our fingers for no frost. And, it, you know, worst comes to worst, we're going to have to come out here and we're going to have to cover what we can. It just is what it is. So, all right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this one. If you got this far in the tour, thank you so much. Um, you know, follow me on Facebook if you're not already. Also on Instagram and Twitter. Check out the website because if you guys got this far, you're the bigger fans. You are the biggest fans, and I appreciate you guys the most. So go on there and see the other content that I am offering you guys. Because it certainly, I think, is worth looking at. Um, but anyway, again, I want to thank you guys again. 
Take care, everyone, and I'll catch you for tomorrow's video. More to come on all the stuff. I don't want to focus too much on figs this year in terms of video content. Um, I've been waiting quite a bit for a lot of this stuff to fruit. And if it didn't fruit, I wasn't really going to talk. Hey, guys, we kind of got cut out of there at some point, but I want to do just a nice little thank you for all you guys who have been watching. Got through this entire tour and still are watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter because you guys are the biggest fans and I feel like you guys would even would like to hear it and would like to see that kind of stuff the most. So, yeah, hope to see you guys there. Check out the new website as well, rossradiwixsitecom slash blog. All that's in the description. And, yeah, just thank – I want to thank all of you guys who got to this point for watching. Really, I appreciate it. So, take care, guys, and uh, I'll see you for tomorrow's video. All right?